talking to you uh, once that's been um, uploaded. So, um, where do we start uh, when we're talking uh, about sourcing from PIP or websites? Well, what we want to think about is any website um, that contain information um, that we can you know, easily search for. So, you, know, you, you are going to search on LinkedIn, of course, yeah, that's always going to be a port call um, <clears throat> that you're, you're going to use. Um, for uh, finding technical stuff, but there are um, other websites that aggregate a huge amount of information about users and about the type of activity that they're actually involved in. So I'm talking about you know um, the, the types of coding that they're involved in and the types of programming language that they're actually involved in. So the first website that I'm going to talk about is, is I'm actually going to talk about StackOverflow.com. Okay. Um, Stack Overflow um, is a, a question and answer site. Um, that allows individuals to go on um, and ask questions about specific um, specific topics. Um, generally, um, on Stack Overflow, it's revolving around um, different programming types um, or different items or objects that they would use um, in programming, um, and then um, receive answers um, and receive. Uh, it's but also contribute to other people's answers as well. So you can see there on the home page, anyone can answer. Uh, sorry, anybody can ask a question. Um, anybody can answer a question, um, and, and the best answers uh, rise up uh, and are voted um, to the top. Um, all in all, that gives us a lot of information um, that's available about individuals, um, and we can be quite clever uh, about how we research on that. But um, let's take a look at the profile and, and look at the type of information that might be available. This isn't a, a brilliant profile, but I'm going to go to this profile instead. So I'm just going to close that profile off, just move that to there. Um, what we've got here is the, a profile of someone who's present on Stack Overflow. This isn't um, someone who's particularly active um, on Stack Overflow, but they do have a reasonable amount of information um, about themselves on the page. So what have we got? We've got their username. We've got their picture, we've got their website address, we've got their location, we've even got their age, the number of profile views, uh, it's quite correct, I've quite done it more than twice. But what's more interesting for us is that we've got this information on the right hand side here, so it's telling us developer with experience in multiple languages, working with Java, JavaScript, Ember.js, um, playing with C++ and Lua. Um, as well, for and he's put there for his personal project. So what you do find on Stack Overflow is that people will talk about not only their work project, but will also talk about their personal project um, as well. Then down below here, we've got um, information about the questions that they've either answered or contributed to, um, and then we've got things like reputation that detail. We've also got answer that tells you the exact answer, and we've then got his tags. Now the way that tags work in Stack Overflow is a tag um, is a skill set that that person has, and they will then receive points um, based on what contributions they've actually made or, or received on the site. So they will be scored accordingly um, on that as well. They can add badges. This tells you a bit more about um, the, the different stack accounts, which I'll, I'll tell you about a little bit more. And then there's some other information, things like votes, cast, active bounties, um, that type of thing, which we're not massively interested in um, for the purposes of this webinar. Okay, so I'm just going to talk, before I move on to, to how you search in Stack Overflow, um, I'm just going to show you um, Stack Exchange very, very quickly. So Stack Overflow is actually one, just one site um, of a, a, a whole suite um, of sites. Um, it is the most popular site. Um, it is, um, Stack um, Overflow is the, the site, the original Stack site um, as such. But if I go to Stack Exchange, um, then um, all very similar, they're all question and answer sites where it's open-ended and you can ask any question that you want. But what you do have is lots and lots of different topics. Now, um, you can see here, if I click on the down arrow um, here, then you can see find the Stack Exchange community. Um, um, but there's actually, they're all listed here as well. So you've got Academia, um, you've got even Area 51, um, Ubuntu, so if there's anyone who um, is recruiting for um, Solar Sky, Linux guys, then they've got a specific uh, Ubuntu site there, so um, they might be interested in that. Um, we've got cryptography, so if we've got anybody who's recruiting for devs or any stats and math guys that are interested um, in that side, you've got data science um, as well. Um, you've even got, uh, I don't know if it's still here or not, I hope it still is, you've even got Lego, yes, uh, 
<laughs> there is a specific stack overflow site, uh, stack exchange site, sorry, uh, for Lego. Um, so people um, are going on um, and contributing to to um, problems that people are having with with the Lego set. Um, I, I didn't appreciate how uh, I was a fan of Lego as a child. Um, I didn't appreciate how complicated Lego had actually got um, until I went on to the stack overflow site, uh, the stack exchange site for Lego, and realised wow, there's, there's a huge amount of all uh, involved. But that just shows you the type of information that you can actually. Um, Get that, that people are talking about. You know, generally um, speaking, if there's something that people can talk about, there's going to be a forum somewhere on the on the internet that they're going to be talking and, and um, asking questions um, and putting those things about. So I'm just going to get back um, to the profile that I found here. Now, what we're really interested in doing um, on Stack Overflow is um, trying to use Google. Um, to find profiles of people um, from Stack Overflow and then try and get in touch with them. Um, I don't need to sign up to, to um, Stack Overflow to do that. I don't need to be a user um, of Stack Overflow. And actually, there's no real point, unless you're particularly interested in being a, uh, or interested as a developer or are a technical person yourself, then there's probably not much value in you signing up um, as, a, as a recruiter or as a profile there, unless you're going to use any of the advertising features um, that are actually involved within it. Um, but you, so you don't have to sign up. On the same way as LinkedIn, you don't have to sign up to LinkedIn to actually search, search against LinkedIn. What we're going to think about now is we're going to think about the type of information that's actually contained within this profile, and then how we can actually build um, a Google string um, to make sure um, that Google only returns back pro, um, pages that I'm interested in seeing, i.e. the profile pictures. So we can have a look at this person's profile. First of all, the giveaway is great. I've actually got a URL, stackoverflow.com forward slash users. Um, so I can use that URL. So uh, I can go to start for 10. I can use the site search. I can type in colon stackoverflow.com forward slash users. Okay. And as soon as I run a search on that, and I'll run a search for, say, a Java developer, and if I search for Java developer in Madrid, just for talking to hit return. Okay, then brilliant. It's actually only going to bring me back to pages of people. And I'll open up this profile just as the example. Give that a second just to load. A little bit slow today. And it's breaking by the details of Alex. Alex um, is an enthusiastic Java developer who um, works between Madrid and London. Uh, we can see there we've got his profile picture. Um, he's got a really good reputation on the site, or a reasonable reputation of 701. So we can tell he's active. He is contributing to the site. Excellent. We've got a website address for him as well. And we'll even get a WordPress site. Okay. So. Um, loads and loads and loads of different ways of actually getting in touch with this person. Okay, I can also use the 360 Social Pro uh, plugin page, uh, sorry, the 360 Social Chrome extension to try and find some other contact information for him as well. So I can install that from the Chrome extension store. And once that's installed, you'll see here on the right hand side, I've got a little 360 icon. I can click on that. And immediately for Alex, um, he's a great example actually. We've got loads and loads of profile information about this person. So I've got a link to LinkedIn, I've got a link to his Twitter, I've got a link to his About Me, his Google Plus, etc., etc., and I've got his email address. Okay, so immediately um, I found a really good candidate, very, very basic search, very, very straightforward search. Okay, of people um, of um, Stack Overflow, and that's got me a candidate who I can then, for example, I could email him or I could go to his Google Plus page and send him a Google Hangouts um, message. I could go to Facebook, send him a paid message. Uh, for someone like him, the last thing that I'm going to do is send him a message through LinkedIn. Okay, because you're probably, you know, you're, there's less chance of you getting a reply. I'm not saying you won't reply, um, but there's plenty of other sites where you can find information about this guy and get in touch with him. Now, that's a really basic search on Stack Overflow. 
What you will find though is he, um, this chap Alex is a really good profile, he's got lots and lots of information on him, but um, there is other, um, there is a lot of profiles on Stack Overflow that perhaps doesn't have quite as much information um, as Alex does. I've just got a question here which I'm just going to pick up just now. Um, that's a good question. Thank you, Hayley. Um, so um, Hayley, who's on the call, has asked, um, um, are you more likely to connect with people um, on Stack Overflow um, than you are on LinkedIn? So you're not going to use Stack Overflow to connect in the, in the same way as you connect with someone on LinkedIn, i.e. send them a connection request, they will uh, accept that rec uh, connection request and then you can start a conversation um, that way. What you're more likely to find, Hayley, though, is you're more likely to find more contact information, more information about the individuals, um, and uh, um, that will enable you to get in touch with people, with the person, um, in a different way, um, and increase the chances of you um, having a successful um, communication with that person. Um, if, if you use the um, use the example, uh, ah, you got to get in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you use the example, um, that, you know, developers, for example, perhaps won't respond to LinkedIn messages. We are seeing that quite a lot. Um, they're maybe not responding um, as, as much as they used to to LinkedIn messages because um, they've been inundated uh, with messages that aren't tailored and aren't personalized. So we do recommend that you try and contact someone um, in another way um, rather than actually using, it, using a LinkedIn message. Okay. Now, um, as I said, um, with Stack Overflow, not every profile um, is as, um, I suppose, um, populated um, as, as this uh, as this chap here. Um, you might get, you know, for example, I think um, try to find this other profile again. Chap Chris, that I said, you know, he doesn't have a really good profile. Um, he um, his website, he doesn't have an email address on it, that type of thing. So. What I might want to do is actually use a search um, on uh, Stack against Stack Overflow that will just specifically target profiles um, that have got websites on them, that have got a reputation um, that's at a certain level. Uh, um, you know, that's maybe you know just giving me more of a picture about someone. Now I can actually do that. I'm just going to change this string and um, intrude to include uh, people. Peter Style, um, Peter's um, the one I prepared there, let me bear with me in a moment. And I can email um, out this string um, to you, bear with me a second. So I've just moved on to another screen just now, so you won't be able to see my screen, just temporarily. Oops. Okay, so I can copy that and paste across, I'm just going to send that out to everyone through the chat function. And all you do with that search string is put it into Google in exactly the same way as I've done. And what I've added into this is I've added um, an in-text for website. Okay, so that means that all the profiles that are brought back in the search will have a website um, on them. And I've asked it to bring me back websites that match .com, .net, .me, .org, or .co.uk, or sorry, .uk, um, or .co.uk. I've also told Google to exclude um, error message here, okay, wait a second, let's just get rid of that, there we go. I've also told Google to not bring me back any pages that have got a minus, uh, sorry, have got a zero reputation. So people do have a habit of setting up Stack Overflow just to review, uh, sorry, Stack Overflow profile, just to view, uh, review questions, review answers, be able to log in and not really con uh, contribute to the community. So you might want to exclude those people from the search, okay. Um, but you could also change that so that um, it's, it's saying mine is zero reputation, but I could, what I could do is put in um, a range okay, of a reputation, so I could put in I only want minus, um, so I'll say I only want people with a reputation greater than 100, then I could try something like that, for example, putting in one dot dot 100 and see if that works um, to, to bring back people. I'm just going to stick with the zero reputation just for the minute. Give that a second just to run. Okay, that's brought me back five results. Um, all five results contain PHP um, on the profile. All five results contain Glasgow, and all, all um, five results contain a website. I'm going to go into Ryan McLaren's page here, RyanMcLaren.com, just to use this as an example. 
he's not a great example as he's new Glasgow in Canada, unfortunately, instead of Glasgow. Um, however, he has got some info, useful information. Um, I can check on 360 first of all, just to see um, whether there's any additional information coming up about this guy. I've never looked at his profile in my life. Okay, so there's nothing there, unfortunately, coming up about Ryan. But what I do have, I do have his personal website. So his personal website could bring up some further information. It's not available, unfortunately. What else could I do, though? Okay, say I was desperate to get in touch with this person, then I could go into who.is. Bear with me a second. And then what I can do, who.is is a um, registry um, of domain names. Um, so I could put in his domain name. So we had ryanmclaren.com. I can then hit search, and I can see if it brings me up any other information about him. They bring me up an email address. They bring me up some personal information. Yeah, there we go. So I've got a personal email address now for Ryan. So it's ryanmcl66 at hotmail.com. So I haven't been able to find him on any other site using 360. Stack Overflow hasn't given me any more information about that chap. But by looking at who is and putting in his uh, URL, I've been able to find out what his personal email address is. Okay, he's not even though his website's not active. That doesn't matter. His domain is still registered. So that's Stack Overflow. Um, just conscious of time, so I'm going to quickly move on. I'm going to talk about GitHub. Um, GitHub is very similar. Here's an example profile from GitHub. Um, and GitHub's a great site, um, very similar to, to Stack Overflow. Um, it's, a, it's a great website for capturing technical um, information about individuals, so for capturing information about what people are talking about and contributing to it. It's a different site. It's not a question and answer site. Um, it's a repository site, so it's a site where people go on and will um, load their, their code on. Um, they'll review other people's code, and then they'll contribute to each other's code as well. I'm oversimplifying it, but in its essence, as recruiters, that's what's very valuable to us, um, is the fact that they're loading and contributing code. As soon as people load code on and then contribute to other people's code, then that's when the person's profile will populate um, with information. So if I look here at contribution, then there's contribution there about R, um, so this guy's a data um, data specialist, a data specialist. Um, there's it gives me popular repositories that he's been involved in, repositories that he's contributed to. So data and code, um, for example, if I click on repositories, it gives me a little bit more information. So I can see I've got Python there, um, I've got PY data, which is another Python, um, another Python uh, repository. Um, so um, got loads and loads and loads of information there um, about people, about what they're contributing to, what they're talking to, talking about. Again, we've also got email address, we've got Twitter URLs, so we've got loads and loads of different ways of actually getting in touch. One thing I forgot to mention is a nice hint, hint um, when you're sourcing for technical stuff. If you haven't been able to find um, people on other websites or, or on sites, um, sorry, when you've looked at a profile, if you haven't been able to find any contact information for that person from the full profile straight away, then if you've got a picture, what you could try doing is just right-clicking on the picture, and this is if you've got Chrome installed, um, you could right-click on the picture and then click search Google for this image. And what Google will do is it'll take that image, it'll run it through the Google search, um, search engine, and it will try and find that picture on other websites. We're just going to use this as, a, a, as an example. Um, okay, what's quite interesting there is it's actually brought me back some different names. I don't know if it should pick up that picture because he is someone um, who is maybe a connection. I think he's a, a yeah, he's been a connection of this these people. Um, so that's why it's brought it up and matched against those profiles. Um, so, but as you can see in theory, that works. Um, in his case, he's actually got quite an open profile. Anyway, his name's Andrew Flowers. We wouldn't have any problem finding him. And his picture is, seems to be everywhere um, on LinkedIn anyway. But that was just a, an example, um, just to show you of a way that you could find someone else. Um, so again, on GitHub, the key is, though, is that I want to be able to search GitHub. Um, by um, you know, um, using Google, I don't have, again. I don't have to be a member of GitHub. There isn't really any benefit to me as a recruiter of being a member there. But I want to be able to run a search through Google 
um, that will just bring me back um, profile, uh, sorry, uh, GitHub profiles. To, there's loads of other content contained within all these things. I'm not particularly interested in them, so I'm just going to ignore them. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm clicking the wrong, wrong, wrong screen there. So if I want to uh, run a search against GitHub, then I can do exactly the same thing as I did this back over. I can run an X-ray search, but it is a little bit more complicated this time. So I'm just going to take another look at this, at this person's profile as an example, just to see how I can narrow down the, the type of information. Um, I'm just going to refresh that page a second. So if I look at URL again, here, what I've got is github.com forward slash Andrew Flowers. Now there's nothing in the GitHub URL for users. There's nothing in the Git, um, in the URL of profiles that actually tells me that it's a profile. So there's nothing that says profile, there's nothing that says user, there's nothing that says anything like that. So I can't do an in URL um, profile. Um, or an URL user, that's not going to give me anything. So what I need to do is think about the information. Rather than thinking about the information that I do want, I'm going to have to think about the information that I don't want. Again, uh, in true Blue, Blue Peter style, I've got another one that I prepared earlier. So um, this is an example. So I'm just going to run this search and then talk you through the logic of it. So what I've done here is I've done a minus in title to get rid and then a minus in URL to get rid of the pages that I don't want to see. So I don't want to see any pages that I've got at master contained with them because they are not profile pictures, uh, uh, profile pages. I don't want to see any pages that have got tab contained within the URL because again they're not profile pages. The same goes for jobs because they're jobs pages. Um, the same goes for articles. Uh, and that gets rid of what we call false positives. So that gets rid of any pages um, in the, the GitHub site that, that are profile pages by using the minus um, icon. Again, I'm just going to send this one out. I've also put joined on there because joined on um, is something that's contained within uh, people's profiles so that can just help narrow down a little bit. But mainly we're interested in GitHub, we're interested in excluding pages um, rather than being, you know, rather than running a positive search as such. So I'm just going to, uh, again, I'm just going to send this out via the chat function. Bear with me a second. Oops. So it seems to be disappearing slightly. Bear with me a moment. So I've just sent that out. Again, I've just used a Glasgow PHP um, example in this case. And I can see I've got multiple results. Okay. Again, click on, I'll pick on this first example here. Okay, gives me lots and lots of information. Michael McLean, loads of information about this this chap. Okay, now what Stack Overflow and GitHub don't give you is work history information. Okay, they don't give you that information. Now you can try through 360 Social to cross reference them against a site that will do. So, for example, their own website or an About Me page or a LinkedIn page, and and that will give you career information as well. And um, but other than that, you are getting a ton of information um, about people and um, contained within these sites. Okay. And again, I can just open up 360 in the exact same way that I did with GitHub. And you can see that gives me loads of information about Michael. It gives me his LinkedIn, his Twitter, his About Me, his Google, his Facebook, blah, blah, blah. It gives me tons and tons and tons of information. And tons and tons of different ways of getting in touch with that person. OK, so the third site I'm just going to very quickly show you and then before we finish up. If anybody has got any questions, um, please start thinking about them and please um, send me a note um, through the question and answer function just while I'm talking about this last part. That would be great. Quora is a, is a question and answer site, but it's not a specific question and answer site um, um, in the same way Stack Overflow is, but it does have um, specific categories. Um, what I find, rather than searching for specific profiles um, within uh, Quora, what I find it more useful to actually do is, is just run a very, very general search to find questions and to find that they, what people are actually talking about. You know, for, as I can see from the home page, this is a relevant one for me because I went to the cinema on Saturday night to see Interstellar. Um, but um, you can take a look here. There's tons and tons and tons of information contained within the question and the answers that are below. Very, very wordy. Uh, I can click on the person's profile. Okay, and it tells me a bit about the person. You, you know, 
<laughs> that's brilliant. We've got a former NASA astronaut there. Um, loads of information, activity, questions, answers, um, tons and tons of information. Okay. The reason why I search on when I search on the questions as opposed to searching on the profile is for when I'm searching on for technical staff to find that just because the profile maybe isn't as populated as Stack Overflow or GitHub when it comes to this stuff, I do find um, just running the search against questions gives me a better better chance of finding leads. Again, I can just do my site search, okay, so it's S-I-T-E, and then colon, in the same way as I did, and then I can search for what I'm looking for. So I could search for um, Java, Hibernate, for example, and Hibernate. Just for example, to find pages initially within the Quora site, um, they contain Java and Hibernate. And you can see it's now starting to bring it back. Now, what it does do as well, though, is it starts to give you information about the URLs. So what I can see there, Java is an object-orientated um, programming language. Um, when I go into actually now a full category about hibernate-java. So I can then start to be a bit more specific about my search. And this is the reason why I do it this way, because I've now found that URL. So I could now search, say it was somebody hibernate Java and see if I can see anything where they're talking about it in Glasgow. No, there's not. Okay. So this is where I just now need to then, um, for example, let's see, say Cora hibernate Java. I could then um, search for um, question within that. Okay. don't really need to do it in this case, actually, because it's quite a small topic, so there's lots and lots of questions here. <laughs> Just obviously bear in mind that um, <clears throat> the language can be a little bit choice in some of these sites. We can see there that the topics are all tagged, and then we'll get the user information there. Okay. So that's just another site that you can use for finding um, information about technical people. Um, and it's actually, you know, I think Quora in particular is very, very good. If I'm not familiar with a specific topic, I'll search Quora. I'll try and find out more information about the topic. And then that leads me better prepared for when I'm talking to candidates. OK. So um, that's three technical sites um, that you can use. The, the two main ones are Stack Overflow and GitHub. The third one was Quora. I'm just going to show you an example of why um, I highly recommend, if you are a technical recruiter, that you use technical sites um, instead of using um, LinkedIn. Um, here's a chap here. Um, his name is Robin Martin. He lives in Glasgow. Um, his uh, profile description on LinkedIn is Jedi Knight, the Galactic Republic. There is no information about this person on the site, about what he does. There's no information about his skill set. So he could be working within, um, you know, he could be a chief executive of a bank, or he, you know, he could be uh, working in, in Costa Coffee. Um, so I don't know anything about this chat um, at all whatsoever. If I then, though, um, I'm just going to use the 360 social tool. Um, what I can see there by doing that is actually he's got loads and loads of information on, on some other sites. Um, we've got um, Google Plus, we've got Facebook, um, we've got loads and loads of different information um, there about him. So I can click onto that site and I can start to get more information about him. So that tells me there. Now I can then do a little bit of digging, uh, a little bit more digging, um, and I can click, I'm just going to get back, so I just unshare my page there. Oops. So that was the wrong page I clicked on. Excuse me. Okay. Oops, sorry, I'm just having a slight problem in the system here. Bear with me. <coughs> so I can then go, okay, Google Plus, YouTube. I've got loads and loads of information about this person, okay, and about the technical stuff that they're actually involved in. So that's why you don't rely on LinkedIn. That's why you need to be looking at pages, uh, other sites. You know, that's somebody's Tumblr page, and it's got lots and lots of information um, about this um, about, uh, about this person contained. So please don't rely on LinkedIn all the time for your searches. Make sure that you are using alternative sites um, and, and, and doing different things. Okay, let's just double check if we've got any questions at all. Okay, 
there doesn't seem to be any questions. So, uh, but please, um, please do. If you've not um, connected with me already, please connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, please um, follow me on Twitter at uh, the link um, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions there. Um, but thank you very much indeed all for your time this afternoon. I really appreciate you dialing in, and I'll look forward to um, discussing um, these topics again with you at future webinar. Thanks very much indeed. Oops, I've got one last question there. I've just seen somebody stick their um, hand up. Bear with me a second. Um, sorry, I've just seen a question from Shlomit um, there. Um, in, in the Google search, do you add in URL? Shlomit, could you just remind me what part um, of the search you meant for that? That would be great. Um, Haley, I've got a question from yourself. Um, yes, there will be a recording of this, Haley. I'll, I'll make sure that you get a copy or get a link to the YouTube recording of this. Okay. This way. Yep, Paul, and I'll make sure the sites um, get sent through to you. No problem. Bear in mind, they are also in the, um, the searches that are sent through using the chat facility already. So um, the, the sites are, are contained within there as well. Okay, great. Thank you all very much indeed, uh, and I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your day.